The final presentation will be given in English by Professor Anthony Turner. He'll teach us how to prepare a good paper and get it published. <laughs> okay, are we on? Yes, we are on. Dobry dien, kolegi. I will uh, continue in English, as you heard, and <clears throat> it's a joint uh, presentation from myself and Natalia. Uh, and our expertise is that between us, we have been editors and coordinators of journals for some years, particularly Journal of Neurochemistry for around 12 years. So we hope we know something about how to get papers published. Uh, <clears throat> and let's start. So the first thing we need to consider is are we ready to write that paper? Is the story complete? Is it a story that is interesting enough to warrant publication at this stage or does more need to be done? So let's see where we start. Where do we begin? Firstly, is the science ready? Is, are all the experiments that you wanted to do, are they complete? because if not, reviewers will certainly identify that. And we're always wanting to publish perhaps before we're quite ready. There are always deadlines for grants, for example. Maybe your competitors are doing similar work. You have people leaving the lab and you want to get the results out while you still have them around to help. Uh, there'll be students finishing their PhDs but do make sure that you've got a good story to tell that is complete. And particularly that the conclusions of your paper are really fully justified by your results because reviewers will be looking very hard at those conclusions. Are the data that you have really of the best quality? the blots, the immuno images, etc. Or do you think maybe you should repeat an experiment just to get the high quality data that journals require? So look at your data very critically. Are the statistics robust? Are they solid? Many journals now actually have uh, their own statisticians that they will consult if they have any concerns about the statistics, professional statisticians will look at them. So make sure if you're not sure about your statistics, consult somebody locally who is an expert. Another consideration is who exactly should be authors on the paper? Of course, the person who conceived the paper, who had the idea and maybe wrote the grant, those who uh, carried out the experiments, uh, those who contributed to writing the paper. Uh, so all those who are named on the paper must have had a sufficient input into the writing of that paper. And that these days needs justification in the submission process. But there are also people to be acknowledged. And there's a distinction there. Someone who has perhaps read a draft off to the paper uh, or in other ways contributed to help but not directly in the main work and of course your various funders uh, grants have to be acknowledged also. Another consideration that can lead to discussions or arguments the order of the authors and it does differ in different disciplines. In biological disciplines it tends to be that the senior author is the last author, though one or two people who have done the key experiments are the first authors. Uh, but it, as I say, it can differ. Some disciplines just have the authors in alphabetical order. And very importantly, if it's an English language journal you're submitting to and English is not your first language, 
make sure you write it in a, a form that is clear in the English language. Do not translate it word for word from your native language text because that will not make uh, sense. Get help from a colleague if you need. Did you want to comment? Yes, I especially wanted to, because I, uh, as an editor, I review quite a lot of papers from Chinese groups and also from Russian authors, and I can see that they try to use some like expressions which are typical for their language, and they try to translate it into English, as it doesn't make a sense. For example, one of the examples, people very often write in English, актуальная проблема, and they translate it as the actual problem, and they change the sense, because actual problem, it's действительно проблема, so you change the text and you change the, the meaning, so be careful about all this, do not translate from word to word, this is very important, and the clearer you write, you do not need to write big sentences, long sentences, it's actually in Russian writing, usually people write quite uh, long sentences, but English requires short, clear sentences, you need your paper to be understood, and this is the most important, write it short and clear. Yes, I would emphasize that point, that the main mistake we see is that the sentences are too long, if it's more than two lines, in English it's probably too long a sentence with too many sub clauses so get help if you need it so let's move on to the writing process and the easy bit might seem making a start but often it isn't whether you're writing a scientific paper or your autobiography or your novel getting the first sentences and paragraphs is often the difficult part so just make a start just spend 15 minutes writing uh, a few sentences and that will then get the process moving. Decide who does what. Is one person just going to write the whole paper? Do you all contribute uh, writing sections which one person puts together? Decide amongst you how you organize the writing process and it differs from lab to lab. Uh, think about what happens in your lab. Uh, maybe uh, if you're more junior, you want the opportunity to practice writing your paper. But generally, for a scientific paper, it's to get the shape, the format of the paper, try and get the results and figures done first, because you can then structure your text around the figures. But make sure uh, what you want to do is to ensure that the reader uh, actually downloads and reads your paper in detail. So you need to be able to capture their interest early on in the paper, rather than, than reading a few sentences and then finding something more interesting to read. So get the right keywords in your title to attract interest of those authors that you'd particularly like to read it. And make the specific scientific advances as clear as possible. But the way you write, the writing style, does depend on the journal and it's very different for Journal of Neurochemistry compared with, say, Nature. Uh, so a, 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 very, a more specific journal compared with a generalist journal like Nature. But whatever the format, it, if it's concise and clearly written, it's more likely to succeed in the first stage or in the revision stage. Try not to keep repeating points in the introduction and then again in the discussion. Keep it short, keep it concise. Length does not necessarily mean a better paper. And get others uh, outside your group perhaps to have a look and to review it, but do acknowledge them. And you'll have experts around in your institute or university. So just very quickly, I'm sure you all know the, the general structure of a research paper. Uh, title, keywords, abstract, they're crucial because that's what first of all leads someone into the paper. They've seen the title, they've seen the keywords in their uh, internet searches and they want to read more. The introduction has to set the scene, but not just your work in the field, that of others around you and preceding you. The methods need to be complete, but 
do not describe in detail methods that you've published about before or very general methods like protein estimation. Just give references to those to keep the methods concise except where clear details of new methods are needed. The results we'll come on to in a moment. Sometimes you can uh, discuss uh, as well as put the results in one section. Some journals ask for that and that can be helpful also. So combining results and discussion. We've already mentioned acknowledgements who you should acknowledge. References must be full, complete, not just mainly references to your own work in the field. Put it in context, uh, historically and also in terms of current literature. Legends to figures need to be clear so that the figures can be understandable and you can understand from the legend. Tables include legends themselves. And also think about figures, think about when you need data presented as a table or as a figure. And there are distinctions there. If you only have a very few data points, don't use a figure, probably better to put the information in a table or even just in the text. And sometimes you know, there may be supplementary material to include. So those are the general sections that most papers will follow these days. Well, the title is of course critically important to bring people to the paper and people often judge a paper from the title, make an instant judgment as to whether they are interested in it, wish to read further. There may be word counts for the title and for abstract, make sure you follow those. You'll need a running title, which is a shorter version to help uh, authors. Uh, uh, editorial. Editorial. Authors, yeah. And, and also the reviewers, yes. Yeah. Uh, and then uh, what else is needed? Well, keywords. Keywords are important, of course. How many? Maybe six. Uh, sometimes they will ask you for a specific number. But the purpose of a keyword is to identify for others to identify uh, the key things in your paper that they would be interested in. So a keyword doesn't want to be very general, like neurochemistry. It needs to be more specific to the field you're working in. Multiple sclerosis maybe, or Alzheimer's, or a particular methodology. So keep it focused on the key aspects of the paper. Uh, the order uh, is usually specified, maybe alphabetic, maybe importance, but uh, do not duplicate. So the abstract, well, I've tried, I've taken an abstract here and I've tried to show uh, some of the key points that you need for an abstract. So in the title, what was done? In this case, identification of coronin 1A. It's clear at the start of the title. What's the study relevant for? Name the disease here, multiple sclerosis. Explain any abbreviations that you have. What the purpose of the study is. Make it clear, uh, in this case, validating an antibody target. What information does the non-expert reader need to understand for the purpose of the study? What novel mechanism maybe does the study advance? Clearly in the abstract you need to emphasize the main finding, the results and what these imply, the conclusion of the paper. So in the last sentence here, together these results demonstrate that coronin 1A is a novel antibody target for multiple sclerosis. Coming on to the figures again, make sure your figures are clear, uh, logically presented and tell the story and make sure, as you can see uh, here, that the quality of your figures are sufficiently good. If not, the reviewers will pick up on this and ask you to repeat experiments. If some data are missing, make sure you do the experiments in a, before you submit the paper. And when you're organizing the figures and results section, it's useful to have subheadings 
to organize your thoughts and to help the reader. And as I said, legends must be very clear. So get those figures right from the beginning and complete. We're well on the way, but uh, there's still a lot to do before we actually reach the ultimate target of the paper being accepted. And of course, the first thing, once you've got all your results, is which journal to choose. And there's a huge choice these days. Uh, specialist journals like New Journal of Neurochemistry, or GLIA, or Neuron, or Hippocampus, or Cerebral Cortex, or a much more generalist journal like Neuron, uh, or Cell, or Nature. But some labs, I know, will try, first of all, to get their papers into a high impact uh, journal, and often uh, the labs are focused in that direction. But for most of us, that's not going to be very productive. You need to think about the level of your discovery. Where does it fit in the hierarchy of discoveries in your field and much more generally in biology? So the general impact, the methodology, is it very interdisciplinary? You can start high, but uh, you can always publish somewhere. Where are your major competitors publishing? Who is on the editorial board? Do you want to publish with a learned society or a commercial publisher? Open access journal, more and more these days we have to. I'll come back to that. Uh, and of course, then you have to pay for the journal. And when submitting, often you can suggest or exclude reviewers or editors. So open access, I'll just briefly mention this, but. Uh, the slides will be available if you want to go through in more detail. But more and more now, we are required or limited in uh, journals we can publish in, in terms of access. And there are two types of open access, gold and green. Gold, you have to pay an article publication charge, which can be quite high, several thousand dollars uh, after the paper is accepted. Society journals will give discounts, but there's also green open access, which uh, is something that will probably be phased out, but general reader access to that is only available after a period of maybe 12 months, unless a journal subscription is paid. And then there are hybrid journals, which are a combination of both. But there are changes happening in the publishing world. Many publishers now are beginning to do uh, deals with individual institutes or even countries. But what we're looking for generally is a high impact factor. Uh, we know about impact factors, but how has it worked out? Well, for example, the next impact factors to be available will be for 2019. And for 2019, it will be citations in 2019 to all articles published in the journal in the previous two years divided by the total number of articles published in that journal. So that's the uh, formula for calculating an impact factor. And many factors can affect that, such as, for example, inclusion of review articles. And the ranking of the journal in, in the field is important. And you can see the huge variation in impact factors from nature neuroscience up in the 20s. But for most journals, we're talking about something in the three to five range being uh, perfectly acceptable for most purposes. And when authors were asked in a recent survey what they considered as important for their publication, for choosing their journal, one was impact factor, uh, then matching to the audience they wanted to read it. And what was not so important was generally ultra fast publication and people were looking for the best specialist journal in the field. So when you're writing, read the instructions to authors. They're different for different journals. We'll indicate if your paper's appropriate. I won't go through this, but Journal of Neurochemistry focuses on and it describes the types of papers that journal wants. Uh, and you have to make sure that you uh, have complete papers not needing extensive revision. Follow the instructions closely, stick to any word or page limits. 
I just briefly want to mention, important here, but bear in mind the ethics of publishing. If you submit a paper, it implies you haven't submitted that data anywhere else, and it's not being considered for publication elsewhere. Uh, that will be picked up. Each author, person listed as author, must have participated in the study, and all authors agree to abide by uh, ethical standards. New uh, antibodies or other material that are produced often have to be supplied if requested. Clearly don't manipulate the data and avoid any plagiarism when you're using published ideas, either your own or other people's words or images. Make sure you give them credit. And make sure you cite references correctly Try not to just cite recent reviews articles. It's important to cite the original research that first showed the finding. And if you want to read something about ethics and reproducibility in science, there's this review written by the current chief editor of Journal of Neurochemistry, you can look at back in 2016. And some of the features that are now required often in submitting are in terms of transparency and openness in science for animal research, the ARRIVE guidelines that uh, relate to animal experiments and also transparency guidelines, the top guidelines that uh, uh, journals will often require you to look at. Journal of Neurochemistry uses specific plagiarism software and will also be able to pick up uh, changes, manipulation of any digital images. Uh, and available now is to show the openness of a piece of work are open science badges that a journal will often use to show that the data are openly presented, uh, the materials are open and available, and particularly for clinical studies, the actual study has been pre-registered with the hypothesis, for example, that is being tested. So what do the chief editor and the editors do? The chief editor generally has a, a, great role on, a greater role on strategy, composition of the editorial board, dealing with the publisher, whereas the editors select referees uh, and uh, handle no, the process, yes. Uh, and the reviewers are picked specific to the topic of the paper. For a, for a younger scientist, among you, if, if you can, try to become a reviewer early on. Uh, if your supervisor will allow, uh, take over uh, with the permission of the editorial office, the reviewing process and get some experience. But generally, what the reviewers are looking for is this paper is appropriate for the journal, really does advance the field, is not repetitious and is likely to be cited. It is complete sound in terms of methodology and not over speculative. Don't go on at rambling length in the discussion, speculating for things that are not justified uh, and make sure uh, that it's complete. As far as you can see, no further experiments are needed. And as we've said, concise and clearly written in the right format uh, and fully described. Okay, so the waiting game we all play. How long does it take to publish a paper? If you're interested in this, there's a, a recent article in Nature uh, from a few years back. But in terms of acceptance for an online publication these days, you're normally talking around 20 days or so, but it can be several months from submission till a paper is actually accepted uh, and on the way to publication. After all that work, don't be downhearted if it's rejected. It happens to everybody. Argue your case if necessary with the editor, but don't go too far, don't annoy them. Address any criticisms, do extra experiments if needed or explain not. Uh, don't do none of the experiments and we submit. And if necessary, talk to the editor. Uh, and you can uh, even request a new reviewer if you feel it's been unfair. But if the decision letter says, no way, go try another journal. 
So there is a summary for you from do you have a complete story to tell through to are the conclusions justified? And I've gone through all those points in detail. If yes, go ahead with the paper. So good luck. And we hope you're cited many times. And finally, uh, this presentation has also been given at uh, the flagship schools of the International Society of Neurochemistry and Journal of Neurochemistry, which the last few of these have been held in the uh, Austrian Alps. Uh, there was one due for this September for young scientists, around 40 young scientists from around the world, focusing on neurodegenerative disease, but also on ethics, publishing, presentations, etc. Uh, this one has been postponed, maybe cancelled because of current conditions, but think about it. Uh, calls will be out for the next flagship school sometime next year. Uh, Thank you for your attention and we'll be happy to answer any questions either in English or, in or Russian. Russian. Uh, okay, Anthony, thank you very much. I, I see very many comments in our chat um, which describe your um, lecture as an excellent instruction to the authors. And many people are asking, uh, do you agree uh, with the idea to place your presentation at our um, website uh, and make it accessible for our participants and maybe, maybe for others because um, say I see definitely, yeah, definitely. No, that's no problem yeah okay, was, okay but uh, I, I, there was I, a lot I, of detail I, 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 in there I have to ask um, if you yeah, yeah sure it's, oh, uh, uh, but uh, yes perfectly happy to uh, and I see one more specific question from Ekaterina Stankova um, could you give some tips how to organize the cooperative work of several co-authors effectively? Maybe you could share uh, your personal experience. Uh, yes, that, that is often the, the, the difficult part. Uh, and when you've got multiple uh, contributors, often in different laboratories or even different institutes or different countries, it can make the work complex. It usually takes more time to do that and leads to more discussion and arguments. But this is where particularly you need one person to take the lead and to uh, decide who is doing what and yes, who is to allocate individual parts to different people. And then that, the lead person coordinates all that. So to have a, a teamwork uh, to put it together. But it's very important from the very beginning to acknowledge everyone who was involved in this paper, in the research, and discuss with all the participants who will be named on the paper and who will play which role in writing the paper, presenting results, giving graphs, giving blots, and so on. But you have to acknowledge everyone. If you cannot acknowledge them as the authors of the paper, just write an acknowledgement. The technical support was given by those, those, and those. And even if someone helped you to write paper, to edit it, also write these pe people. It will, you know, save you much more problems in sol sol solving disputes after, afterwards. Everything has to be done in, in advance. Uh, okay, thank you. Uh, another question. Uh, from Daria Bilan, is it okay to cite very old investigations which are hard to find and read now? For instance, work of say, 19th century or something like this? Uh, I think it depends on the nature of the paper that you're writing. If it's a review article, of course, that's fine. For an original paper, maybe one or two papers could go back that sort of time. For example, if it's an Alzheimer's related paper, you might want to refer to the really early work in, in that area. But uh, the, the key point I was making is that often people will just cite a, a 2018 review rather than the original work that was published in 2005, say. You need to really make sure you give credit to the original discovery. Even if it was published? Even in if a long way back, yes. 18th century. <laughs> within, within reason. You need to get a, a fair balance of old and new. 
Okay, thank you. Uh, another question from Anastasia Ilyina. Um, can you give some recommendation about writing of review papers? Because it's something, it's not research paper, there is probably there are some peculiarities here. Yeah? Uh, yes, I think for a review paper, it is a, a, a rather different style. Uh, I was, as, it, as you saw, was focusing on the original research paper, but a review paper, uh, clearly then you need to be much more comprehensive uh, in covering the field, uh, put it in the context of uh, broader areas of, of research uh, and make sure that you give credit uh, widely to those who've made the earlier discoveries. But again, with a review, there are clearly going to be some more novel points that have uh, come to light recently and you need to, to focus on those. And it's very important because a very many people write a review paper based on the PhD thesis and take all this introduction and put it into the review. And you can see it immediately. When you review this paper, you can see that it was a part of PhD thesis. So don't do that. Yes. If it was your thesis, still change the structure and just put the main points, more recent points of, of the studies in the first place. Uh, uh, okay, uh, I do not see more questions in the chat, but I, but I see some uh, hands. Uh, Piotr Brzezowski, Piotr Mitch, uh, your microphone is switched on. Okay, so, so thank you very much, actually, it's just very instructive. I, I got a, a lot of information for, for, for myself uh, uh, about the review. It's actually, I absolutely agree with you, it's come to be to my mind, the story with Alain Troutman, who is a French scientist, very good French scientist, and Bennett Katz. And he, when Alain Troutman was in, in, in the department of Bennett Katz, he came to Bennett, Bennett Katz, he said, I would like to write a review. The Katz looked at him and, do you have to say something, really? Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so that, that, that was the story. And, but my question is to Tony, thank you again, once again, for this very good thing. But you said that young people are advised to be reviewers of the papers. This is actually rather questionable for me. They can be co-reviewers, but not reviewers. Yeah. In many cases, the young person actually is not knowledgeable enough actually to be there. And from the other side, he wants to show actually that he is very good and he is trying to find something critical in, in nothing, actually, just the root. And you have to explain, you have to struggle with that one. So it seems to yeah. me that this policy actually to, to teach how to be reviewed, this is one thing, but to be responsible reviews, this is completely different. No, I, I agree with you completely. I, uh, I, it needs to be someone who's already got some experience uh, with the science and writing papers and reading papers. But uh, if you haven't become a reviewer, try to get that experience as your science develops. That was the point I was trying to make. Not in your first year of PhD. Yeah. But it's also important from the, it's very important for the supervisors to see if their students or postdocs, they are good enough because they might know some techniques and some experimental parts which they can, looking at the paper, can say this is was correctly done or not correctly. Sometimes you need this expertise. Then you invite your postdoc or PhD student to co-author your review. And you write to the editorial office telling that I have this very bright person and who helped me. And many journals acknowledge that and they put these people into the list of reviewers. And this is how you build your expertise. This is very important. If you do not start to review papers, you will never be critical reviewer for yourself. But this is the most important. What point I have to do? You have to, after you have written your paper, you have to put it aside for at least one week, then read it again as, a, as you are a reviewer. And then you will see all your, you know, faults and all your little, you know, hiccups, and then you can correct yourself much better. This is very important to do. Yes, that's that's the time I agree with you. That's I remember actually advice from from, from Professor Magazanik who said actually just write the paper, wait <laughs> one or two weeks, yes. read it again, and you will find a lot of mistakes. And yes, yes, that's that. a very good point. I should have included that <laughs> next time. Uh, okay, colleagues, uh, I see one more question from Karen Simonian about conclusions. 
uh, we must summarize the most important results uh, of discussion or not or something else. What, so some comments about uh, conclusion section. Yeah, uh, it depends. Some journals ask for a separate conclusion section, which would just be a few sentences, which would really focus on the novel discoveries in that paper that have advanced that particular field. Uh, so that really is an emphasis of, of what should also be in the abstract, but just when you get to the end of the paper, maybe a paragraph just brings that to a focus for the reader again. Uh, okay, thank you. Uh, we have one more participant who wished to ask a question. Uh, Nikita Zhilyakov. Uh, Nikita, your microphone is switched on. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much for a wonderful speech. Uh, and my question is, uh, how much reasonable uh, a payment uh, for um, open access? How do you think? Uh, it depends very much from journal to journal, publisher to publisher, but these days, uh, it could be $2,000 and above, maybe $3,000. Uh, I think, for example, Journal of Neurochemistry, if you want open access, it's $3,000. But if you're a member of the society, it's only $1,000. So a lot of journals that are linked with societies have a special deal to give reduced open access fees. But it is a, a big problem across the world because rich countries uh, that are fun, have a lot of funds for science can afford to support publication in this way. But in uh, other countries where funds are more limited, uh, it becomes very difficult to uh, find ways to publish. So this is why publishers are now trying to do deals with individual governments. So the government um, pays the publisher a sum which then allows any of the scientists in their own institutes, universities, to publish and to read pay open access papers for free. So uh, it's not funded through grants. For example, in the UK at present, uh, grant, your grants, you're allowed to claim costs for open access publishing. But uh, there is a switch now in the UK a number of publishers now have direct deals with the government that then allows universities to uh, get free access. So it, it, the, the, it's a very fast changing area of uh, funding, payments and how it's going to work in the future. There's no doubt it's irreversible and eventually everything will be open access. Governments seem to feel that if uh, they are funding research, then any of their citizens should be able to read that research. But I'm not sure that the average person in the street necessarily wants to look at a paper in Journal of Neurochemistry, but governments seem to feel that uh, openness uh, is required. So it varies across the world. It does make for difficulties for those countries that have, that have limited funding for research and uh, the, it was going to take place from this year. Uh, everything would switch to the gold open access type, but after a lot of discussions, it's been deferred for several years as changes happen more gradually. So it's, uh, it's progressing uh, and probably in five years time, it will be a diff very different picture that we have. So try to publish your papers because they become very expensive <laughs> to publish. But also collaboration, sometimes, you know, collab collaborators, different institutions and laboratories, they just participate, you know, in sharing the price of the publication. Like if you want to write a paper, so different laboratories pay their part of their, you know, investment in, into the papers. You can share the costs with your colleagues. But of course, for Russian scientists, I see that it will be quite a big challenge in the future when all publications will be only by open access and the prices are very expensive. So it should be little, I assume, so scientists should probably 
appeal to the governments or to the academy of sciences or to ministries to understand this problem because if you know grants requires published papers to be published in good journals then scientists need to have a support to do that otherwise the russian scientists will be not able to publish their papers in high impact factor journals and this is has this has to be treated very seriously now yeah okay Thank yes you. yes it's, yes it's problem it's a problem uh, dear colleagues, uh, I beg your pardon, there are so many messages, so thank you very much, it is great, it is very useful, so maybe I missed some uh, uh, re re real questions, but I see one more. Giancarlo. Uh, uh, are there any trainings online for the students uh, uh, who plan to prepare scientific papers? Do you know some online yes, trainings? Yes, there are some. There are some journals have, I think, even journal for neurochemistry at some point even organized training for Chinese scientists to to write paper and to I I can find this information and I will probably add it to the slides and you publish it uh, together with the slides on the website of the optogenetics. Yes, there are there are such such schools. But always, if you need questions, ask us. We can help you with some advice. Yes. Not overwhelm us because we will be not capable to help all 100 participants of this uh, chat now, but um, please ask questions and we will be happy to help. Okay, thank you. Uh, one more question from uh, Mikhail Firsov uh, about uh, low impact factor journals um, uh, repair offers from submitting the paper uh, without high score offers. Uh, so the magazine might uh, not increase its uh, impact factor. What would you advise for our journals? Uh, well, clearly you want papers that are going to be cited. So uh, to include more reviews is something that uh, some journals do. So there are various tricks that journals can do to, to, reject to invite, papers. To invite uh, good papers. scientists to write a comment or review article uh, and uh, that can improve the impact factor quite quickly. So Journal of Neurochemistry did that from publishing maybe one review an issue to publishing three or four an issue. Also having papers on hot topics, reviews on hot topics, uh, and special yeah. issues of the journal. This is what a, quite a lot of journals do. Uh, for example, uh, I am sure that quite a lot of journals now are doing special issues on coronavirus and COVID-19. So some take some hot topic that's re relevant to your journal and then create a, a special issue uh, of a number of articles on that topic and uh, that will tend to get more citations in the early stages uh, and therefore help to raise the impact factor. And also I want to raise this question, to reject very weak papers, do not be, you know, tempted to be kind to someone. If the paper is really very weak, better to reject it because it will draw your journal down. You know, there should be acceptance rate in good journals. It's about good acceptance rate. It's about below 40%. If you go above this, impact factor will go down very quickly. So this is also very important to consider. Okay, we shall uh, write uh, the office that Turner and Levi was suggested us to reject your papers. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we can take the blame. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Um, again, I do not see any more questions, so probably we should uh, say thank you, thank you very, very, very much. Thank it's you very good. much, thank yes, you. Happy to help. Okay. Uh,